I haven't posted a video and it's been really busy uh, here. Everybody says that. Um, but uh, in this case, I actually am in the middle of uh, transitioning a few things and I have some other projects happening out at my um, old cabin that I've been uh, trying to restore. So that's a whole other story. And uh, I know people like to see videos about uh, that. But I'm here again. I'm in the paint room. I am working on some pool sticks uh, on the lathe back here. And uh, I'm about to show you guys what uh, I've been working on. I'm trying to make a cue um, with parts that I got from them, which uh, has been a little bit daunting just for me personally because I, I feel like I don't know what I'm doing uh, and I'm learning as I go. So I'm like a little bit afraid to mess things up because I bought them and you know things uh, time is money as well so I don't want to waste any time I don't want to waste any money by messing up uh, one of the pieces that I got or have to like rebuy something but it's like a good it's been a good test for me here so uh, let me show you what I'm doing I'm making a uh, I'll be making a maple handle today for this six point Bacote Q that uh, that hopefully I'll have together in a few weeks hopefully we'll have it done totally done by April. That is my uh, main goal. It's going to take me, you know, I'm slow over here. I'm only working on one cue at a time. Uh, all right. Well, here, here we go. Here's where we're at so far. Um, I've drilled and tapped this, which is a 3 8 by 10 pin. And I've cut this whole uh, rod down. This is my handle. Um, this will be uh, under a linen wrap eventually. But I'm going to cut a little tenon right here so that this tenon will then fit up into uh, the forearm of my cue, which is here. And I'll bore the end out here. And then this will basically screw into and attach there with... Uh, with glue, with a little a tenon here and a, mort, a mortise uh, here. So let's uh, get to it. Let me put my safety gear on here. For those of you wondering what's on my weird hat that my wife keeps giving me a hard time about it is an original Wendy's uh, where's the beef hat uh, so it's been a lot of fun wearing it around reminiscing maybe you guys remember this old lady here where's the beef just kind of funny something to mess around there's nothing uh, any no reason to dress up these days so I've uh, had a little bit of fun uh, messing around all right here we go I made this guy Okay, now we're just uh, measure. Uh, I set my uh, uh, housing up here so that it was a little more square because I'm going to plunge cut in and then uh, cut away. And uh, <clears throat> so I just need to calculate how deep my tenon is going to be and then how thick my ring work is going to be and then plus a little bit of extra just in case I mess up. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself an, an inch worth to play with. Okay. So I can see my line. Go to it, lock it in. Mm, okay. 
pretty cool. Just under 0.75 uh, thousandths of an inch. All right, guys, I've uh, threaded this in, and uh, this is kind of how it's going to go. We're going to have uh, the A joint mount up here. I'll bore. Uh, this out here. I'm gonna have to cut some material off here as well, which I might save and use as a joint protector um, But I'll bore this out to the same diameter as that This will go on. I'll have a ring uh, in between there. This will get glued and screwed together and uh, we're Kind of halfway done with the butt once that's done uh, I forgot one quick thing here. I want to do I want to cut some uh, glue relief holes here so uh, more glue can be held in here so check this out I'm just, I'm just gonna make a couple little stripes uh, actually I think I'm gonna do it with my cutoff tool it's a little bit uh, more narrow pretty good. Alright, I already marked that there for my 12 inch for my handle. And uh, my butt sleeve is going to go up into the handle here. So I think I can just cut it off here and maybe use this piece for uh, my butt sleeve. Something like uh, this here. I'll core this out, and then this will slide over top of this maple hand, maple rod, and then rings on either side, and then a black butt cap on the end. Let's just get this squared in here. Wish I had a chuck back here. This would get 
this would be so much nicer, cleaner of a job. There's going to be a little bit. There's going to be a little bit of wobble. So the trick here is to make sure your tape doesn't overlap. Okay, so what I did here with the tape was I put it a layer uh, upon layer upon layer. I didn't just wrap it all the way around. And what that did was I had a little bit of a gap in between my bearing because I didn't have a collet that was big enough to fit over top of this uh, stock uh, wood. Um, so I just used the masking tape to fill up to act like a collet in between my bearing and uh, loosen this because it had off-centered a little bit. And I think what I've done here is that I can now um, say for certain that I, with this machine and this setup, I can't get this any more uh, in line and straight um, than it is right now, basically. Um, if you can see the pin over here, it's spinning uh, perfectly straight. What they say is dead nuts straight. And uh, so now when I cut this line, I will know that it is uh, perfectly perpendicular to the length of the cue. And that's important because when you put the two pieces together, you don't want it to be cocked off to the side because then when you cut the whole thing down to side, you'll cut more of one side off than the other and then you get uh, wonky rings. I can show you an example of that later if you'd like. Um, I did that on my last cue accidentally. It's a little bit it's hardly noticeable, but I notice it and I can point it out and show you. So um, I want to avoid that this time with this cube because I think this one's going to be um, much better than the last two with all my learning. So, all right, let's uh, cut this uh, down and see uh, what we got inside. I bet it's going to be maple. Cutting tool. What I'm trying to do here is make sure this is cutting on the most outside edge of the piece. I'm just trying to line it up here with my uh, pilot hole that I drilled. That's about as close as I'm going to get it. Now I gotta make sure this is perfectly straight. And to do that, I'm gonna have to loosen this. All right, I think we're ready to cut. Here's my line. 
maybe maybe I can make it easier to see for y'all. You see that? All right, that's. <clears throat> Lock her down, turn her up. Here we go. All right, let's make sure this thing doesn't go flying. And I'm going to face this off. just a little bit more. I'm gonna make sure that's nice and flat. All right, now I'm gonna center drill this guy and uh, get it ready to uh, tap the tenon because basically my uh, this piece now will end up being uh, it'll have a tenon on this. There'll be a hole here, and then it'll go right up in in there. Uh, I might put a screw in there. I might do it using an aluminum screw because I don't want a lot of weight added back here. So I have these uh, already made aluminum uh, joint screws. They're flat on one side uh, for glue relief, and so this will go right in here. Weighs hardly anything and then this will screw up into that and then that's how a pull stick's made just put my tailstock in tighten it up center drill I like to line my bits up on here so that I can see the cutting edge. Um, I've never been around really a cue maker that often or anything and I'm new to it so I just kind of know what I like to see and I, I think I like to see the way that cuts uh, as I'm deploying it into the wood. Uh, so it makes me feel like I know what, like I can see what I'm doing anyway. All right, I like to get this right up against it because um, the less this handle has to move for me, that tells me it's going to be more accurate. So I go slow here just to, you can feel it bounce around if you go too fast. And then I, I center drill all my holes to the same depth, no matter what I'm going to do with it. And I just like to keep a little light pressure. All right. That's it. I don't know why I always brush my tools out, but I'm trying to keep them clean. This is kind of a messy hobby, and until I get dust collection, uh, uh, that's what I'm going to do. So, all right. So now I'll end up boring this hole out to, um, I'm going to use a uh, 75 thousandths of an inch. And that way, when I make the tenon on this one, 
Uh, this will be 75 thousandths as well, or just slightly under. And then that will go uh, right up in there with the screw, just like I did on the other one here. I could do it another way. I could just tap this uh, and put another, put that joint, that uh, aluminum connecting screw in, and that way both are actually fastened in the maple handle. I don't really know what's better to do. Um, I think having the weight, you know, of the of the the metal forward, I have to look up what weighs more metal. Uh, the aluminum or maple for that size rod. I'm best. I'm betting the aluminum probably st still weighs more. Uh, so if that's the case, I want the aluminum to be more on this end uh, of this joint than on this end. So I'm going to put most of the joint screw in this. So I think I'm going to drill and tap this and put the uh, aluminum screw in that. We'll see. I'm going to think about it for a second. All right, guys, I decided that since all the energy is coming down the queue when you strike the ball, I want the weight, if the energy is transferred through the outside of the wood here, it's probably mostly transferred through the inside, but the energy will be traveling down this direction. I want the outside of this uh, to to hit the out, the outside face of this. So I think I'm going to keep it the same. I'm basically going to make a smaller version of what's in the lathe here uh, as the butt sleeve, and that way it's count, it's consistent all the way down. I think that's what I decided to do. So uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, I already center drilled it. I'm going to drill this out pretty big because I got to get up to seventy five thousandths uh, inches and uh, which is three quarters of an inch. <clears throat> and I'm gonna bore that out and then I'll center drill it again. Once I get it in, get a hole, a big hole in it, I'll center drill it in back here and then I'll tap it. Uh, I'll drill and tap it with a three eighths by 10 uh, for that aluminum screw. And then this piece is gonna be ready um, and I'll start working on the butt sleeve uh, maybe in the next video. Um, or maybe the rings. Maybe I'll start. Maybe I'll do the. Go ahead and make the rings. Uh, we'll see. This would be a good piece to make the rings out of because it's not really a great, uh, great piece. I've already hacked it a little bit, so um, we'll see what what I end up doing here. I'll measure it and I, I'll I'll try to make another video about that. Um, but let's bore this, tap it, and uh, then that's gonna be it. <clears throat> Starting out a quarter inch.
So I've already drilled down in there, so I'm just gonna go straight to the tapping. My air thing is a Harbor Freight job and it leaks, so I don't leave it plugged in. All right. Let's see how it looks. Looky there. All right, so that will screw in a lot more. Let's see how far I can get it in with my hand. I've done this a couple times and then end up cutting my thumb, so I don't wanna mess with it too much. All right, let's see if it's straight. It's just like putting in a joint pin. Uh, so. Looky there, it looks straight. That flat spot looks pretty crazy in, a, in there. But I'm happy with that. Onto the butt sleeve and the rings next. Thanks guys.